The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. Wealth is about more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. NetWealth is supporting financial literacy and education in primary schools through Banker, a fun, interactive platform for children to learn about money. So far, we have sponsored and given over 100,000 children in Australia free access and want to reach even more. Discover a world of community at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. To give listeners of the Advice Tech Podcast another avenue to solve technology problems that matter most and efficiently evaluate the landscape of advice tech providers, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform. If you want to know how your advice peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, it's the place to go. Head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're talking connecting the back office, automating the advice process, and ultimately reducing the cost of advice with Josh Ratnaraja, co-founder at Paradino. So you may recall Paradino from a few episodes back, Advice Tech 91, as it was actually born out of scale-up power planning with Josh's co-founder being Mr. Alex Gassner. Talking to Josh, it's pretty exciting to see what Paradino is currently focused on and what they're building, starting with effortless professional and compliant file notes. I think we can all agree that recording client as well as internal meetings is one of the quickest wins and biggest time savers for advisors and everyone in a business. And with what feels like a rapid rise in AI file noting and transcription apps, especially financial planning specific ones, longer term and more broadly, we're definitely starting to see changes to the ways that we interact with our CRMs because so much more has become possible with AI, especially if our interactions are recorded and transcribed. So whether that's the automation of entering data and ensuring data consistency, viewing client records and being able to ask questions in a natural way, you know, rather than looking at a whole bunch of fields or related bits and pieces. And the idea of your CRM actually proactively presenting clients and insights to you is really exciting. I started by asking Josh what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. Um, Yeah, sure. Well, uh, obviously being a technologist, um, I try and stay at the forefront of all the latest and greatest tech. Um, So most of my stuff is like, you know, less than a year old, but I will say um, the one thing that I still have lying in my bedroom is the original Sonos Play One, Oh no! which I bought in 2014 when I was living over in New York. And uh, at the time, that was like the most revolutionary uh, product in terms of the home audio experience. And I'll tell you what, after 10 years, the sound that comes out of that little speaker is still amazing. So... It does play less Metallica these days and more Wiggles. Right. So, <laughs> gotcha. It's grown with you. That's really cool. And yeah, it's amazing how sort of speaker tech. I've had that a couple of times. It just they just go and go and go, and you don't need to upgrade them. So maybe they need to introduce a bit of planned obsolescence into that industry. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I guess moving into yeah current decade or last 12, 18 months, maybe two years. And obviously the right person to ask, but is there maybe one or two ways that you're using AI either personally or in your business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first one that comes to mind is GitHub Copilot, especially since uh, since I started the you know new company and we're building MVP. I think it's boosted my productivity by 30 percent. It's amazing, you know, and how intelligent it is to understand your entire code base and all your different files and what you actually coded them in the last five minutes and, you know, suggesting um, new code that ties into that context is, you know, 
uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I will say in quotes that it suggested maybe 20% of the Paradino code base. But <laughs> right. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> um, and the other I would say is ChatGPT, obviously, right? Personally, I think I use it a little bit for, you know, holistic debugging of code when I can't find any answers in Stack Overflow. But okay. personally, I uh, I asked some random questions when I, uh, I just need someone to ask and uh, – I'm in front of the laptop. So one one cool, interesting thing I asked was when I kind of uh, resigned from my previous role, I asked it, uh, I gave it my resume and asked it, you know, what should my next career move be? Right. It didn't exactly say Baradino, but uh, it, it did say that uh, doing your own startup could be, a, could be a good option. So, and here we are. Cool. Leaving it to your own fate. That's really awesome. And then it feels like, at least on the developer side, I'm comparing this to financial planning, financial advisors, et cetera. But it, it feels like is is GitHub Copilot quickly become a tool that you can't really live without? Like you can't imagine life without it? Like how would you do, how would you cope on your own? I, don't, I mean, before Copilot, you did have, you know, some suggestions in terms of code completion. But I, I think sure. now if I didn't have it, I would... I'd be waiting for it to give me some code suggestions and then I'd be upset that it didn't. I'd have to type it all manually and, uh, you know, then you'd yeah. have a pay point there. So, it, it does become part of your life and definitely enhances it uh, for sure. Yeah, I'm with you. No, awesome. And I guess today, speaking of enhancing things with AI, Paradino, I guess before we jump into all things Paradino, though, I'd love to learn more about you, Josh. Like, how did you get into tech? What's your professional background? And yeah, how did you end up landing and co-founding Paradino? Sure. Um, I mean, I actually started uh, as a power planner during uni. And then uh, once I graduated, spent a short time as a financial advisor in Sydney um, before moving into tech. And my first tech role was actually at uh, Midwinter Financial Services, where I met Alex, my co-founder. Um, we worked together for a few years um, before I left uh, the home country and moved to New York um, and worked for uh, a late-stage real estate startup. Uh, I continued my engineering uh, career and then moved into engineering leadership uh, over the last few years. And uh, that company was actually acquired by another a bigger financial index provider. And uh, I worked on some pretty cool climate risk um, data analytics products before deciding to move back back home and um, linked up with Alex and uh, just kind of threw some ideas together and we both wanted to, um, I guess, build some sort of AI first product. And, and that's kind of how we, how we landed at Paradino. But uh, it, it was, it's been an exciting journey, you know, moving from financial services to tech and, and to New York and through our yeah. acquisitions on both sides and then back to Australia and, and uh, working on a startup. So, you know, pretty exciting awesome. times for us, yep. No, really, really cool and thanks for sharing uh, your story. I think it sort of makes sense why you've gone down the startup path after doing it all and sort of living that life and going through that journey. I think that's really cool and I'm sure you would have made that call even without ChatGPT recommending that to you. I think that's awesome. Um, do you mind sort of taking us through what it is? Like what have you built and what is the, what would you say are the problems that it's solving? Yeah, um, so we obviously think there's a huge opportunity in – financial services, um, you know, financial planning specifically, right? That there is a very high cost of advice. Um, so, there's a lot of demand um, from Australians to obtain advice. And obviously, due to regulation and, and other things, there are a lack of supply, right? So, there's this disconnect there. And we're also trying to uh, – there's also a lot of different roles involved in providing that advice process. And we think there's a huge opportunity to provide efficiencies across that process. And by doing that, right, lowering the cost of advice, enabling financial advice businesses to scale and see more clients or engage better with clients, and then ideally um, enabling more Australians to obtain advice. So that's the core problem that we were trying to solve when we we coined the idea for Paradino. And our vision is around that is around connecting the back office. Yep and automating as much as we can um, of the advice process. And we believe that, you know, AI is that technology that can uh, accelerate that. So, yep. that's where we're at. And I, and I think the first version of Paradino is focused on meeting summaries and file notes. And I think that is the reason for that, obviously, is there's 
a lot of strength in um, with AI doing summarization um, and providing structured output. And it was kind of like a natural first step in that advice process, right? You know, you firstly a client, you can have a client meeting, initial discovery, fact find, right? You've got to write file notes. It's a big it's administrative burden, right? Let's take that off the financial advisor or the admin staff. And then, you know, our vision is to move down that process as we build that roadmap and uh, new features. Yeah, awesome. No, it makes a lot of sense to start there. And I guess um, it's not just having a positive impact on the advisor. I assume like having all the facts and all the context is key for the resulting power planning team to prepare a great financial plan. And obviously, AI is a great solution for this. Do you mind sort of taking us through I guess the the overview of, of your current functionality. I know you just mentioned the the file noting aspect of it, but how does that sort of work? Like any practical examples of am I logging on to a web app and then going from there? Like how does it sort of look? Yep. Uh, so it's browser based uh, as well as um, mobile based. So you can use it on your phone or your laptop. Um, the idea is that it's a it's a web platform. So yep. you log in. Uh, it has a user interface. You can uh, upload previously recorded meetings uh, or record inside the app. Um, that way you're not really tied to a specific um, recording platform or whatnot. And then once you've uploaded your recording, you uh, it will generate your file note within a few minutes. Uh, and then you can you know, refine the wording or edit that file note within Paradina uh, and then save it, export it as a Word document to uh, attach uh, to your financial planning software. Uh, and you can also send a you know a nicely summarized client email um, directly from the app. Yep. No. Awesome. And then just on that summary side of things, so the AI will essentially uh, you've got from looking at a couple of your demo videos, you've got uh, your templates that you've configured, and then I believe you're clicking that sort of email summary button. It's then giving you a client friendly version of what happened, rather than all the internal stuff that maybe doesn't need to go to the client as well. Yeah, that's right. So, so we have uh, four templates that we provide to our users. Um, that's across initial discovery, fact find, SOA presentation, and review. We do have a custom templating solution that's coming out very soon. That's going to be self service, where a client uh, user can upload their custom template and then generate a structured file note based off that. And yep. then, yeah, the client emails are, are kind of a, a friendly from the point of view of the advisor, professional email to just summarize what they spoke about in that meeting that they can quickly edit and send to the client. Yeah, perfect. And I'm making an assumption here, but in terms of that upcoming sort of custom templating functionality, I assume that might be a big sort of barrier to entry for some advisors where they've got maybe a licensee that wants that file note done in a specific way. Would that be a fair assumption? Exactly. I mean, our goal is to reduce the number of minutes it takes um, post file note generation to get it to a compliant state that they can store it in their financial planning software. Um, so custom templating will reduce those minutes, right? Especially for those advisors under a licensee that have those requirements. Yep. Awesome. And you mentioned, obviously, we're exporting that data and then saving it to our CRM. We've obviously got a lot of that data in there. We're using AI. Do you, do you mind sort of talking about the approach to cybersecurity, data retention, where the data is, et cetera, just sort of taking us through that sort of thought process and what the yeah, approach has been? Yeah, our, uh, our philosophy from the beginning was uh, a high focus on data security um, and especially kind of considering data residency where that data is stored compared to the user. So since our first release is to the Australian market, uh, all our services um, and data stores are located in Australian regions um, in our cloud environment. So from a data security perspective, we take that very seriously. And then on the user side, uh, our version one comes with multi-factor authentication um, and extensive kind of password restrictions, et cetera. So obviously within the financial services industry, that's important, right? So we're putting a, a focus on, on that as one of our core values. Yeah, cool. No, very comforting. And I'm just sort of thinking as well, like we're, we're now using another piece of software. We're then exporting that, putting it into the CRM. Have you got anything to add around sort of data retention? Like are we going into Paradino to view historical file notes or is it really just about getting in there, using it as a lightweight tool, exporting it, getting out and moving on with our lives? Uh, well, so, so the idea with Paradino is that it will 
uh, retain that history of client communication and file yep. noting so that not only do you have a paper trail for compliance reasons, but you can leverage all that data in the future to provide insights into client behavior, to provide client engagement opportunities to generate leads. So we believe that like having that 360 degree view of the data from a client perspective is very important. Um, we do have a you know a short retention policy on the recordings themselves. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Right. So they only we only store them for thirty days, but the file notes themselves um, we do store indefinitely for uh, the value add regions. Yep. No, thank you for clarifying that. And I think this is this is like new age CRM stuff. Like having all of these conversations recorded, all these interactions recorded, it means that you're building up that picture of a client to, I assume, query naturally what has happened with that client since I've last seen them um, with clients that maybe you might get, you know, reassigned or there's always sort of moving and shaking going on in practices where you've got, you know, a, a client switching advisor or, or whatever the ability to get up to speed really quickly as well. Do you think that's a, an upcoming benefit of something like this? Absolutely. I think I think the whole CRM landscape is going to change. Yep. Uh, and I think the way we manage client relationships from a technology perspective is going to change. And I think it might be controversial, but uh, I think AI is going to bring a whole different type of interaction between your client information and the user. And not necessarily like just storing specific data points and having to build functionality to write queries. It's just going to be a natural language type approach. Um, so we're trying to help accelerate that in our own way. Um, so some of our kind of initial features in our roadmap are focused on that exact type of value. Yeah, cool. No, awesome and very exciting. I mean, obviously that comes with its challenges, Josh. And you know, it's a, a product that is, I would say highly reliant and focused on AI, would you say, what would you say some of the challenges you've faced with sort of building something like this and involving AI at the heart of the product? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the benefits of building an AI-first product is that you're always at the forefront of the technology. Um, yep. So, there's always exciting new capabilities that you can deploy into your features that add significant value that was never achievable before. But on the flip side, uh, you're also bound by its limitations. Uh, so sometimes you've got to wait for the development of the AI to be able to release a feature that you want to provide a solution for. Yeah. So it's two sides of the coin, but it's an exciting area to be here for sure. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. And then, I mean, where would you say we're sort of currently at with AI and financial planning? Obviously, you've gone and built, um, you know, file note automation essentially. Where do you sort of see it going? And maybe this is a good opportunity to speak about the roadmap as well and what's coming up. Sure. I think we're in obviously in the early days um, of yeah. realizing AI's full potential in in a lot of industries, in financial planning specifically. I think the file noting is the first going to cab off the rank. But uh, what we see is a lot of um, streamlining and automation and opportunities further down the life cycle of the advice process, really from lead generation to client engagement to scoping the advice to preparing the product recommendations, the strategy recommendations, and then all the way through to SOA generation and the review process. And, you know, we think AI can enable a lot of that to be more efficient uh, and less reliant on back and forth between roles uh, and manual data entry, et cetera, administration. Um, so that's kind of where our roadmap is focused to start at the beginning of the process and see where we can provide efficiencies to that to the back office and to that advice process. So instead of it being an expensive kind of, uh, you know, providing the advice is expensive, implementing the advice is expensive, we can kind of reduce that cost of advice. So I think from file noting and custom, custom templates, we're heading towards creating that 360 degree view of the client in terms of the data from their CRM and fact find all their e all the client emails and file notes and being able to create um, draft strategy recommendations, product comparisons, uh, and then down to the, the information needed for power planning to produce the SOA. Um, and then down the track, I think a whole different way of being able to generate SOAs will, uh, AI will be capable of um, kind of tackling that. So that's our focus for the next uh, kind of 12 months. 
Yeah, awesome. And uh, you just sort of alluded to the fact there where it's really helping with a lot of the grunt work that sort of power planners are currently tasked with or lumped with. Do you think that role then sort of changes to reviewing content rather than creating it themselves or maybe a mixture of the two? Yeah, not necessarily. I think what AI is going to achieve is to reduce that kind of administrative and what you said, you know, like grunt work, right? But the, yeah. the actual like nuanced research and uh, cash flow modeling and all that sort of stuff is still going to have to be done by a, you know, a, a power planner. Uh, we're just taking, we're just trying to take out the the work that doesn't need to be, you know, handled by yeah. a human. Yeah, and the stuff that most likely doesn't excite most people to be doing as well. The steps that yeah, we need exactly. to do to get to the fun stuff, which is like the modeling and the, um, I guess, you know, preparing a, a proper SOA or advice document based on having all the facts, which obviously AI has helped us with by actually recording that file note and, and getting us there quicker. I yeah. Mean, apart from, um, apart from maybe file noting or that sort of automation in its current form, is there anything else that you're seeing as sort of the most sort of bang for buck or practical use cases of AI? Um, and conversely, any areas that you see businesses are using it maybe for the wrong purpose? Yeah, I think there's a huge. I think we alluded to it before, but I think there's a huge opportunity in enhancing the client the client relationship. Yep. From touch point, creating touch points with your client, um, to enhance engagement, to lead generation, to even kind of hooking into a client's personal life and interests, and providing portfolio updates based on news. And I think there's so many opportunities there that um, have yet to be realised. I think on the the other question, I you know I don't specifically want to judge where people are or are not using leveraging AI as well as adding value. But I do think you know businesses have to be careful about how they use AI in terms of which providers they're using and what data they're providing the AI. Because I think based on different business requirements and regulations, you just have to be aware of what the provider is actually doing with your data and where they're storing or processing mm. it. Gotcha. And I, I guess that also translates to how you're prompting as well. Like some of the best results that I've seen from using, um, you know, paid and secure version of AI is you're actually giving it the source data. You're giving it, hey, this is the this is the guardrails that you should work with rather than access your whole LLM and come back to me with a niche answer. So I think prompting is really critical and key to this too. And just a simple tweak can result in something so different. Yeah. And no, that's great tips there. So Josh, you, you mentioned with the sort of lead generation with news, et cetera, are you sort of alluding to the fact that if you're connecting in maybe external data sources, whether that's sort of news feeds or what's going on in the world, having that come into that central place, which might be Paradino, which might be something else, which has all that client information in there, you can quickly match, I guess, client interests or, uh, you know, this client might be impacted by this in a certain way and get AI to do all that heavy lifting and then really improve the proactive reach out or uh, proactive communication or sort of notifications that goes out to clients rather than advisors, you know, trawling through or reading an article and going, oh, these three clients might like this. It's really scaling that process. 100%. I think um, some of the new capabilities of AI are that uh, they can leverage your existing data that you own as well as their vast training data set and then as well as real-time APIs or information that comes from the web. So putting those three kind of data sources together and creating valuable insights is I think that's the next kind of that's the next potential for uh, for businesses for sure to leverage. Yeah. No, I'm I'm totally with you. And I think, yeah, go on to the days of the sort of annual review of what's happened in your life. It's it's trying to flip that coin and actually go head first and be proactive with your clients rather than the other way around and clients coming to you with their issues. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's a whole different mindset, but it creates a stronger relationship with the client. Yep. No, perfect. Um, I mean, at this sort of current stage, how quickly would you say an advice firm can get up and running with Paradino and start using it in their business? I think if they're already recording their client meetings, then straight away um, they can just log in and start uploading uh, and see results within minutes. If they're not currently recording their meetings, then it would be a slight 
you know, change in the process. Um, they would just have to, you know, kind of let their clients know that they're, they're recording for file learning purposes and, and go from there. But it's not a huge hurdle. I think everyone's kind of used to having uh, either video calls or recording meetings anyway. So, um, yeah. I think it's it'd be quick, pretty quick to, to get up and running. Yeah, awesome. And I sort of, I've probably brushed over it, but I believe with your functionality, it doesn't actually even have to be a recorded meeting with a client. It could be just escalating that sort of voice to text or sort of voice memo that an advisor or someone might do after the fact to transcribe the conversation they've had and then get those same insights on the back end. Yeah, some advisors prefer to take notes during the meeting and then kind of dictate uh, a file note afterwards. So, uh, in that sense, you can do exa- get exactly the same result that, that you would get from a recorded meeting. Absolutely. Cool. No, I think, and I think that makes it a lot more approachable as well, especially if you're not, um, you know, comfortable yet in recording those meetings. And I think the way you've built it too also really helps for, it seems to be in a lot of businesses, hybrid meetings are a thing. You might have some in person, some, you know, virtually some bit of a combination. One client or client partner is on the screen someone else is in the room too. So you can maybe just hit record with the voice memo app on your phone and then after the fact, um, actually chuck it into Paradino and, and reap those benefits after. Yeah, absolutely. You can just you can actually just record in the app itself if you want. Oh, perfect. Okay. Skip that step. Awesome. Awesome. So, Josh, I know you've spoken a little bit about the roadmap, but is there anything else you want to share there or anything else that's got you excited about the future of Paradino? Yeah, I mean, we're really excited for our custom template solution. We think it's um, di- it's differentiating from the current market and it's very flexible in the sense that um, it's not even restricted to financial planning or to file notes. Um, okay. It provides a whole you know new way to create structured output that's very user-friendly. So, we're very excited about that. And the second is kind of the next big feature that we're working on around looking at all of our file note data and, and other client information and being able to drive um, those client insights, analytics, and even actions from that information. So, an example is being able to write natural language queries uh, around uh, client information such as um, give me a list of clients that have dependents under 15 uh, and then rank by their net wealth uh, as an example and then you know, we want to provide suggestions to take action, like uh, create an email campaign to target those clients, um, and then provide a nicely generated uh, email template to send out with the distribution list, etc. Right, and it just has to be confirmed, slightly refined by the the advisory admin staff, and then sent out. So, we're pretty excited about that uh, as kind of a next feature in the roadmap. But uh, honestly, we just want to continue down this this um, advice process and we think as new developments in, come out in AI, there's going to be very exciting opportunities in each step of the process that we don't even realize right now. So, that's the you know the most exciting thing about it. Yeah, awesome. No, that's they're really cool and really exciting things to come. I think as you mentioned there, I'm sort of stuck in the file note game. Like it's you're mentioning you're not even limited to that. You can actually um, generate highly structured documents, as you mentioned, and that is the a bugbear of most businesses is someone's got to be, you know, well-skilled when it comes to whatever financial planning software you're using or other software you're using to code the freaking template, like saving a lot of time there and reducing that key person risk there, risk there too. Yeah, exactly. I remember that being the worst part of my power planning job with, you know, managing those SOA templates. Yeah, shocking. And I guess the where it's heading to is, you know, we've talked about how this is making advisors more proactive. I guess I guess the next step is the AI is actually giving proactive insights, as you mentioned too. So the advisor is getting the proactive um, nudges to do their things rather than them looking for those insights or knowing what to query to then go from there. So it's sort of going up the chain a bit. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Josh, is there anything we've missed? No, I don't think so. It's been a great conversation. It has. Thank you so much for your time, mate. What's the best way to progress the conversation? Oh, absolutely. Um, You can visit our website um, and you can book a demo straight in with Alex, my co-founder, and he'd be happy to show you what it's all about. Um, If you want to sign up for a free trial, we offer a two-week free trial and uh, you can get started straight away just by going to the website and clicking sign up. 
Perfect. Josh, thanks for your time. All right. Thanks, Patrick.